Alrighty, welcome back in. We just talked about some of the best coaching hires from this past cycle through my eyes. And now let's get into a way too early top 10. This is going to be something that we do uh, throughout the off season on Tuesdays, calling it Top 10 Tuesdays. I uh, love that alliteration on my end. But um, So give me any ideas you guys have in the comments for ones I can do uh, in the coming weeks. I've had thoughts of doing best college town in, in America. I've, done, I've thought of doing uh, Top 10 quarterbacks going into next year. So open and to any and all suggestions, uh, but let me know what you think about that. Um, but let's jump right in. Uh, obviously, you don't necessarily, um, it's, it's not going to be perfect around this time of year. It's going to be a little bit of a, a mixed bag and some uh, shots in the dark in some ways. But I feel pretty good about this top four. I think a lot of people across the industry have had these top four teams um, kind of setting the pace for everyone else. And I think it starts with Georgia. Um, now, there is a big argument to be made that Ohio State could very well be above them, but when I look at the quarterback position from both those teams, it's hard to not feel confident in Carson Beck going into this year. Um, I tend to believe he might be the best uh, quarterback coming back this coming year, and um, when you have someone like Will Howard going into Ohio State, while I think he's more than capable and will have a, gr a very good year, there is still that question mark of how will everything fit together, how will everything work. So I do have Georgia and then Ohio State in the 1-2 spot, but you could call that 1A and 1B if you really wanted to. And the next two teams on this list you absolutely could call uh, 2A and 2B or 3A and 3B in Texas and Oregon. Um, Texas you know, has Quinn Ewers coming back, obviously, for a third year, which is a huge help. Got a ton of help in the wide receiver room through the transfer portal with Isaiah Bond, Matthew Golden, Silas Bolden, uh, tons of really, really talented guys in that room. And then the running backs with Jaden Blue and uh, C.J. Baxter. There's tons of offensive talent, obviously, at Texas, but I think the defense um, will have to replace a, a number of pieces, obviously, up front uh, to Vondre Sweat and uh, Byron Murphy being the main ones of those two. Uh, that you need to replace on defense that are going to be big tasks. Obviously, they have guys like Alfred Collins and Vernon Broughton sitting right there in the wings, but you don't know how those guys are going to play until you get into spring practice and everything. But I love um, the foundation that's been built at Texas, and I think next year will be kind of building off what happened in 2023. Uh, but with the prerequisite talent that Georgia and Ohio State are going to have literally all over the field. Ohio State, namely Caleb Downs, who I think is the best player in all of college football. It's hard for me to put them above either of those teams. And then Oregon, getting uh, Dylan Gabriel from the portal is obviously huge. Replacing someone like Bo Nix is not an easy thing. And they got a dude that's a lot like Bo Nix. Very, very smart, very experienced, can make a ton of different throws. And will always be ready for, you know, any adversity that comes his way. You know, Dylan Gabriel has dealt with injury. He's dealt with a number of different things. So if you're Oregon, you're looking at that, you're thinking we have a really tough kid that's going to be ready to roll. Um, so I would be very encouraged by that if I was a Ducks fan. I think um, Dylan Gabriel is uber talented. Having Tez Johnson back is obviously a huge help. Um just tons of talent all over this team. I talked about um, in a segment a couple, uh, maybe last week, I think, um, talked about adding Jamari Caldwell and Jabbar Muhammad through the portal. It's absolutely huge for that defense and what Dan Lanning wants to do. Um, so I think those are two great additions. So that's what kind of has them falling at four. And then I have Alabama. Um, I think there's a lot of contention around Alabama, obviously, since Nick Saban has left. There's a lot of people... Um, kind of ready to dance on Alabama's grave a little bit, uh, I suppose. But I wouldn't be uh, too prepared for that uh, if I was a college football fan that really wanted Alabama to struggle. I wouldn't necessarily expect it in 2024. Now, there's still a lot up in the air, obviously. Adding a new coach, taking over for the dude uh, and Nick Saban is never going to be an easy thing. But Kalen DeBoer can coach football, and he's going to have a ton of talent to work with. They just added... Uh, Keon Saab from the portal um, from Michigan, which is a huge help, obviously, to that back end that has been, 
kind of decimated since Traverius Robinson made his way to Georgia, but it is going to be an uber-talented team. There's no two ways about that. Obviously, bringing back Jalen Milrow, he's one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Um, there are plenty of people that have plenty to say about Jalen Milrow's ability. I tend to believe he is one of the more talented quarterbacks in the country. I don't necessarily believe he is quite up there with Quinn Ewers, Carson Beck, um, you know, the elite throwers of the football that we have. But at the end of the day, he makes a ton of plays for his team, is a huge part of that offense. And with a guy um, coming in like Kalen DeBoer that knows so much offense and can get the most out of a run game like he did with Dylan Johnson a year ago at um, Washington, I think with the talent they're going to have, not only a quarterback running the ball, but um, Justice Haynes and Jamaria Miller are an incredible running back duo that he's going to have to work with as well. So basically what I'm saying is Alabama is still Alabama for the time being. Uh, they could show us a ton throughout this spring and in the 2024 season that could convince me otherwise. But as of right now, they're still Alabama. They still have a ton of talent and they still have a very good coach at the helm, although it's not big man Nick Saban. Um, but a team that hasn't really found their way uh, into the top 10 in recent years, at least in the um, preseason poll, is Ole Miss. But they're right there this year, and it's a lot to do with that transfer portal class that they brought in. Um, Jackson Dart, obviously, coming back is huge. Uh, Trey Harris is one of the best players in all of the country, but especially one of the best wide receivers in all of the country. Um, just tons of talent all across this team, but it comes down to... Lane Kiffin, you know, winning some games that he hasn't necessarily won in the past. You know, you got to beat the big boys if you really want to um, compete in, you know, conference championships, especially with Texas and OU coming into the fray. You got a lot to go through to get to the SEC championship and to be at the top of the sport, which is obviously what Lane Kiffin wants. You know, they want to be in the playoff, of course, but at the end of the day, um, you know, you want to compete for conference titles, especially in a conference like the SEC. And I think Ole Miss has a relatively good shot to do it. You know, it's, it's going to be somewhat of an uphill battle. But Jackson Dart is a very talented quarterback that really knows the Lane Kiffin offense, which is not an easy offense to uh, fully grasp. And he obviously has full control over it now. So It'll be interesting to see what he is capable of doing this upcoming year. I think he's a guy that has a chance to make a ton of money this upcoming year in the NFL, depending on how he plays uh, in 2024. But the team I have following them is Notre Dame, uh, a team that a lot of people obviously are not as high on for reasons that really have nothing to do with 2024, but that's beside the point, I think. Bringing in Riley Leonard is kind of the same uh, vibe of Ohio State bringing in Will Howard. It is a very, very comfort uh, comfortable guy that has played a ton of football that can make all the prerequisite plays, all the prerequisite throws, is a capable runner, can do all of the things that you're going to ask him to do, and can do them really efficiently, and has done them really efficiently for a number of years. So... I think he's going to be a huge help to this team, not only running the ball, throwing the ball, but in a leadership perspective. And then in the wide receiver position, I think Jaden Greathouse is a guy that is going to explode this year. Um, he had kind of a shaky freshman year um, that was kind of on and off, but I would argue they were putting a little bit too much on his shoulders in terms of what they needed him to be uh, for this team to be successful. I think that's going to kind of be subsided this year. I think not only his ability will be higher, but I think they have more dudes around him that will be able to make the prerequisite plays and be able to um, take a little bit of that pressure off him, which is obviously huge. Mitchell Evans is an incredible tight end um, that's coming back for them, has the chance to probably be the best tight end in all of college football this year. And then on the defensive end, uh, keeping Riley Mills in the fray for this next year is huge uh, from Notre Dame's perspective. You need that linchpin in the middle of your defense, and he's the guy, right? Uh, Tavondre Sweat was a huge effect on Texas' ability to make the playoff, and Riley Mills has the chance to have that same effect on Notre Dame if he can be super disruptive the way he was a year ago and um, has really proven to be an elite defensive uh, tackle in this, you know, in the college football world. 
Um, but let's keep working our way down the list here. I got Missouri at eight, um, above Michigan, which I know looks a little bit weird, but this Missouri team is obviously building something. I talked about Williams Nawari adding him um, as an elite five-star edge rusher is the ultimate help to this defense, especially losing Darius Robinson in that position this past year. But the main two reasons I'm picking this is Brady Cook's coming back, which is huge. Having a quarterback that um, understands the playbook. I talked about this with Jackson Dart. You know, Quinn Ewers is a big part of this. Carson Beck. Um, knowing the playbook is a lot of the battle in college football for these quarterbacks. And Brady Cook knows it inside and out. And then Luther Burden, uh, who, you know, other than Caleb Downs, you'd be hard-pressed to find a better football player in all of the country than Luther Burden, and I think he's going to have not only a Bolitnikov-type year, could very well win it, but he's going to be huge for this team in so many different ways, and guess what? They also have Mookie Cooper and Theo Weiss right there next to him, so it's kind of an embarrassment of riches when it comes to that wide receiver room in Columbia, Missouri, so I would not be surprised if they were firmly a part of the SEC conversation. Now, I currently have four SEC teams above them, even though they're in the eight spot. So just keep that in mind when we're talking about these teams going forward. But um, I really do love what Eli Drinkwitz is building up there, and I think he will continue to do that in 2024. And then I got two Big Ten teams to finish it out, Michigan and then Penn State. Um, I kind of flip-flopped on this a little bit uh, leading up to the show. I think uh, there are a lot of things to like about Penn State. I think Drew Aller is going to kind of turn a uh, corner in 2024 um, and have a little bit more of consistent play. Obviously, adding Julian Fleming in the portal is huge. But when it comes to Michigan, I know exactly what Michigan is going to be, right? I, I know that Sharon Moore is going to run the ball a lot. Um, you know, Wink Martindale is still kind of a question mark at uh, defensive coordinator in terms of what he's going to run and the identity he's going to play with. But I know exactly what I'm getting from Michigan week in, week out, because there is an ingrained culture there that is left over from the Jim Harbaugh era that I believe Sharon Moore will carry right on into 2024. And I don't necessarily have that comfort level with Penn State. Not that um, Penn State isn't capable of, you know, being right there in that conversation, but there is a question mark with adding two new coordinators, um, Drew Allard not being uh, necessarily as consistent as you would have liked in 2023. So there are a lot of question marks uh, with Penn State that I just don't see quite as often with Michigan. Now, um, there are some worry spots with uh, Michigan, but I tend to just believe in the overall program uh, to kind of supersede some of those uh, holes and some of those issues more so than at Penn State, but Penn State is absolutely a team that could be working their way up these rankings uh, even before the year starts for me, um, but then especially when the year starts, I think they're a team that uh, a lot of people like to overlook because of their shortcomings in the previous years, but I think they're more than talented. I think they're more than capable, so I think they'll be more than fine. Uh, and then finally, just some quick uh, honorable mentions, LSU... Um, I do believe in this team. I think they added, obviously, a great defensive coordinator in Blake Baker from Missouri, added two great defensive line coaches. Um, but Garrett Nussmeyer, I have ultimate belief in to be the dude. They added C.J. Daniels, a wide receiver from Liberty. That's going to be a huge help. So I really like this LSU team. I don't necessarily think uh, they'll be able to necessarily compete for the SEC, you know, having – five SEC teams in the top 10 will do that to you, but um, I think they'll be a plenty good team. Another team in the SEC that's like that is Oklahoma. I think they are very good, obviously flipping from six and seven in 2022 to 10 and two in 2023 is a remarkable improvement in the Brent Venables era. And it feels like he's slowly kind of getting that identity that, um, that group on defense that he really, really wants. And I think uh, it's going to be a huge help to him going into the SEC. And then I really like Jackson Arnold. Now there is that question of if Jackson Arnold goes down, um, is the backup Casey Thompson, who just came in uh, on his, I think, seventh year in college football, to be the backup there? Or, um, you know, do they struggle like they have in recent years when Dylan Gabriel has gone out? So that's definitely something to keep your eye on. And then Arizona and Clemson, two teams that – Arizona 
is kind of moving it in an upward trajectory. Clemson kind of slowly moving down. But I think um, Garrett Riley at Clemson, I think, will be able to get a little bit more comfortable in that situation and be able to call a little bit more comfortable of an offense for K Klubnik in 2024, which will lead to success for sure. And Clemson's always going to have the talent on the defensive line to play. So I'm not super worried about that. Peter Woods was an elite player uh, as a freshman a year ago. So I really like them. And then Arizona, obviously building off the success of last year, did lose Jed Fish, but I really like Brett Brennan as a head coach, and then bringing back Noah Fafita into Tory McMillan is just ridiculous. In this new world of uh, transfer portal, everyone would have thought that they were going straight to Washington, but they decided to stay in Tucson, and that's just a huge win uh, for this staff, and I think it could be the difference between them being a, you know, 7-5 team and them being, you know, a real contender in the Big 12 and possibly even in the playoffs, so... uh, this is my general thoughts this early on in the process. This is very much subject to change with uh, spring practice coming up and everything like that. But that will do it for this edition of the GSMC College Football Podcast presented by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us. Please remember to subscribe and leave a positive review. It absolutely really does help um, all of our you know, stuff around uh, different social pages and follow all those social pages on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for all the updates. We release tons of content throughout the day um, across every sport, so we will keep you up to date with whatever you need. Um, But thank you once again for listening, and I will see you next time. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a